Hello and welcome back to the Master Civil Engineering. In the previous video, we learned that how to compute the maximum shear and movement at a specified point in a beam due to a series of concentrated and uh, moving loads. And in this video, we will learn that how to determine both the location of the point in the beam and the position of the loading on the beam so that we can obtain the value of absolute maximum shear and movement caused by the loads. I have been given a question which states that we have to determine the absolute maximum shear and absolute maximum movement in the beam due to the loading shown okay this is a simply supported beam of span 30 meters okay and we have a series of four concentrated load you can see the distance between the loads which is uh, fixed and we have to determine the absolute maximum shear and a movement uh, in the beam due to this loading okay first we will find the absolute maximum uh, shear okay so absolute maximum shear in the simply supported beam uh, will occur just to the uh, next to the one of the supports okay so in this case uh, we have to place the series of loads in such a position that one of the loads is at the supports here absolute maximum shear will either occur at the support a or at the support b and when it occurs at the support a we have to place this three kilo newton just to the right of the support a okay and if it occurs under support b then we have to place this four kilo newton load just to the uh, left of the support b okay we have to position the loads in such a way that all loads are on the uh, beam and one of the loads is just to the next of the support okay so first case we will assume that 3 kilo newton is just to the right of the support a and we will find the vertical reaction at a okay so taking the movements about b equals zero and assume that clockwise movements are positive and anti-clockwise movements are negative okay take the movements so it will be a y into 30 which is the total span of the beam and this is a clockwise movement then minus 3 into 30 movement to this 3 kilo newton uh, load which is an anti-clockwise movement minus 6 into 25 this is again an anti-clockwise movement minus 2 into 22 which uh, this is also an anti-clockwise movement and minus 4 into 19 this is also an anti-clockwise movement movement due to all these loads will be an anti-clockwise movement okay and movement due to the support reaction will be clockwise movement from this we will get the value of vertical reaction at a equal to 12 kilo newton okay after that we will place the load such that this 4 kN is just to the left of the support B and we will find the value of vertical reaction B okay again taking the movements about A equals 0 clockwise movements as positive and anti-clockwise movement as negative so movement of uh, this BY about A uh, this will be an anti-clockwise movement so it will be minus BY into 30 movement of this 3 kN about A will be 3 into 19 and this is a clockwise movement movement of 6 kN about a is 6 into 24 again clockwise movement movement of 2 kN about a is 2 into 27 this is also clockwise movement and movement of 4 kN about a is 4 into 30 this is also a clockwise movement from this I, I will get the value of py equal 12.5 kN okay so we can find that the absolute maximum shear this occurs for the second case that is when the 4 kN is placed just to the left of the support B and here the value of vertical reaction at B is 12.5 kN so this is the absolute maximum shear for this beam okay after that uh, we have to find the absolute maximum movement so absolute maximum movement in a simply supported beam occurs under one of the concentrated loads such that uh, this force is pushed on the beam so that this force and the resultant of the forces are equidistant from the beam's center line okay and as a general rule uh, this absolute maximum uh, movement will occur under the largest force which is nearest to the resultant of the system okay so you have to place uh, the load in such a way such that this force uh, this load and the resultant is equidistant from the center line of the beam and then you have to find the value of the absolute uh, uh, movement under this force okay uh, so uh, we will first find the resultant of this loading okay so resultant of this loading is simply the sum of the forces that is resultant of these moving loads is 3 plus 6 plus 2 plus 4 which is 15 kilonewton and the location of the resultant from this 3 kilonewton 
is given as okay taking moments about this 3 kN uh, so resultant will be uh, fr into x is equal to 6 into 5 plus 2 into 8 5 plus 3 is 8 and plus 4 into uh, 5 plus 3 plus 3 which is 11 okay from this you will get the value of uh, that is the x bar that is the distance of the resultant from the 3 kN equal to 6 meters okay so this resultant is 6 meter from the 3 kN so distance between the resultant force and the 6 kN is uh, the total distance is uh, this x bar is 6 and distance of 6 kN from 3 is 5 so total distance between fr and 6 kN will be 1 meter okay Sim uh, similarly uh, the distance between fr and 2 kN will be 8 minus 6 which is 2 okay because the distance of this 2 kN from 3 kN is 5 plus 3 which is 8 and distance of fr from 3 kN is 6 so distance between fr and 2 will be 2 meters and distance between fr and 6 kN will be 1 meter okay so we will place the load in such a way that this fr is uh, this fr uh, and the 6 kN is equidistant from the center line after that uh, we will find the value of movement near the 6 kN similarly we will choose this 2 kN also and place it in such a position that the resultant of resultant fr and 2 kN are equidistant from the center line and find the absolute maximum movement near the 2 kN okay so first we will select the 6 kN and place it in such a position this is equidistant that the resultant and this are equidistant from the center line okay uh, and we will take the movements about the uh, support b equal to 0 okay so uh, a y uh, into 30 taking the movements a y into 30 minus 4 into 9 point when you place the uh, loads on the beam these can be the distance distance of the 4 kN from B is 9.5 meter distance of 2 kN from B is uh, 9.5 plus 3 which is 12.5 distance of 6 kN from B is 15.5 uh, uh, and distance of 3 kN from B is 20.5 these are the distance when the 6 kN and uh, this resultant is placed equidistant from the center line okay so this distance will be since the distance between 6 and uh, uh, resultant is 1 meter so uh, this distance from the center line 6 distance of 6 kN from the center line is 0 0.5 meter okay from this you will get the value of ay equals 7.25 kN so movement about 6 kN is given as cut the section at the 6 kN so movement will be a a 7.25 into 14.5 okay minus 3 into 5 so movement will be 90.13 kN this is the value of the movement when uh, the uh, load is placed uh, 6 kN load is placed such that it is equidistant from the center line of the beam okay next we will place the load such that the 2 kN at the resultant is equidistant from the center line of the beam okay next we will uh, place the load such that this 2 kN at the resultant is equidistant from the center line so distance between this resultant and the 2 kN was 2 meters so we have to place this um, uh, resultant at a distance of 1 meter from the center line and 2 kN this will be also at a distance of 1 meter from the center line and you can find the distances uh, uh, of these loads from support A so we will find the movement under this 2 kN uh, uh, 2 kN force okay so for this we will again take the movement about support a equal 0 and find the value of vertical reaction at b you can also find the value of vertical reaction at a i have find the value of vertical reaction okay and then you have to find the movement uh, under this 2 kN so uh, this will be by into 30 here i have taken the anti clockwise movements as positive and clockwise as negative so by into 30 distance of this 3 kN from A is when the resultant and the 2 kN are placed equidistant from the center line distance of 3 kN from A is 8 meter and this will be a clockwise movement distance of uh, 6 kN uh, 
about a is a uh, 13 meter distance of 2 kilo newton about support a is 16 meters and distance of 4 kilo newton about support a is 19 meter okay uh, so movement due to these uh, four loads this is clockwise and here i have taken clockwise movements as negative and distance uh, sorry distance or uh, sorry movement of uh, vertical reaction about a is a anti clockwise movement and i have taken this as positive okay so from this you will get the value of vertical reaction at b equal to 7 kilo newton okay after that you will find the movement about 2 kilo newton for this you will cut the section and consider the uh, right hand side of the section so movement uh, will be equal to by into 14 minus 4 into 3 okay so movement is uh, value of by is 7 so movement is 7 into 14 minus 4 into 3 which is 86 kilo newton meter we can see the movement in the first case is greater than the movement in the second case that is movement when the 6 kilo newton uh, load and the resultant is placed at equidistant from the center line um, is greater than when the uh, is greater than when the 2 kilo newton and the resultant is placed equidistant from the center line so absolutely clearly uh, absolute maximum movement will occur when the 6 kilo newton load is placed uh, in such a way that the 6 kilo newton and the resultant is equidistant from the center line and in this case the absolute maximum movement is 90.13 kilo newton per meter okay so this is how you can find the value of absolute maximum shear and absolute maximum movement for a simply supported beam for absolute maximum shear uh, it will occur under one of the supports such that the one of the series of the concentrated load is placed just uh, next to the support and for absolute maximum movement you have to find the resultant and place this resultant in such a way that the resultant at one of the load is equidistant from the center line okay so this is how you can find the absolute maximum share and absolute maximum movement for a beam i hope this solution video was clear and effective and you definitely learn something new if you still have doubts you can write them in the comment box i will try to answer your doubts okay and uh, if you found my videos helpful please uh, like this video share this video with friends and uh, subscribe to my channel okay thanks for watching and stay tuned